Welcome to Drawing Conclusions. I'm Josh. I'm Jessica. No snappy beginnings here. <laughs> we're all out of snap. <laughs> no snap today. There was a big Christmas rush on snap, so we're all out. <laughs> yeah, sold out of snap. <laughs> anyway, today we're reviewing Chapter 6 of The Mandalorian. Yes, we are. Featured on Disney+. Plus. 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 And this may contain spoilers, so... Will just contain spoilers, for sure. May, will, possibly, maybe contain spoilers. <laughs> Got my bases covered. All right, yeah. Anyway, so, Jessica, what did you think of this episode? So, I liked it. Um, it was a different kind of episode. It's interesting how every episode has had kind of a different feeling to it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think the first two are most similar, um, to each other. And then um, since he's kind of been going on these side adventures, they've all felt a little different from each other. And this one was different again. You know, it took place in space. Up, uh, You know, the whole time, the whole uh, the whole entirety of the episode, he was on ships. <laughs> so Right, ships or space you know, stations wasn't on or whatever. A, right, yeah. He wasn't on a planet. Nope. Um, and so that was interesting. There were, again, a lot of callbacks, things to make you just, like, feel all these warm fuzzies about being in the Star Wars universe, you know, when he gets to the... Lots of member berries. The... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When he gets to the rebel... Well, it's not the rebel... The New Republic um, ship, you know, and it just is that white interior. Just totally right. reminds you of Star Wars, right? And the... the I mean, A New Hope, right? I yep. mean, it just feels very familiar. Um, what did you think of this episode? I mean, I have a lot to say, so I'm going to stop and let you say something. <laughs> Oh, okay. No problem. <laughs> Tag, I'm in. Um, I really enjoyed it. I, I've enjoyed all of them so far. I don't know if I have a favorite yet. Yeah. But I have enjoyed all of them. I like this one. I like the ensemble cast mm -hmm. and the idea of Prison Break. I know a lot of people call this a heist movie. I think that's... A heist episode? It wasn't a heist. They weren't... Yeah, it was a prison break. It was a prison break. Yeah, yeah. for sure. I'm like, this, they weren't heist stealing Heist is when you're anything. stealing something. Right. right. I'm like, this is not a heist. don't know what heist means. I don't think they do. <laughs> Anyhow, so I, I like the prison. Dictionary. I like the prison break episode, and like the the band of mercenaries hired to go in and yeah. do their thing. Uh, I thought it was cool. I thought it was funny that Bill Burr was in this movie or in this episode. <laughs> See, that was what I struggled with the most. Actually, was the band of characters. It's interesting because you really first. like the band of characters. Yeah. But um, the guy who was the ringleader who got them all together. I can't remember his name. The, the scruffy. Yeah. Um, dude. Um. I've seen him in stuff. He was so weird. And that was the thing. It's like they had, quite a few of these characters were just really weird. Like. Very odd. Yeah. And like unpleasant. And it's hard for me when characters are so unpleasant, I think. You know, and they're the focus of the episode. So, I mean, the Mandalorian just doesn't ever say very much. <laughs> and right. so most of the dialogue, right, is said through these other characters who were all just kind of unpleasant. Well, it makes sense that they'd be unpleasant because they're. On the fringes of space oh, and criminals, and yeah. so I think they did a yeah, great job. Yeah, for sure, of being they're supposed unpleasant. to be unpleasant. But yeah. I'm just saying, it's kind of then it's kind of hard to like root for them. Well, yeah, I mean, you're definitely not supposed to root for them, though. But it's no. kind of just a hard. I mean, I don't know. Do you know what I mean? It's just like it's hard for me to enjoy it when the whole focus is on these people that are like, I dislike every single one of you. <laughs> <laughs> you have negative feelings, so therefore it makes it difficult. And then the Bill it. Burr thing really threw me off. Like, I just, I mean, we talked about that right. when we were watching the episode. It just, I was like, that's too weird. Like, it took me a long time to get over, over the fact that he was Bill Burr, you know, and to get right. past that and just For those who don't know, Bill Burr is a performance. popular stand-up comedian, and he appears on many a late-night show talking to various hosts. But to me, the the worst thing was um, the girl, the tw Twilight or whatever girl. Mm -hmm. <sighs> She was this kind of character, this kind of female cliche comic yes. book character, you know, the action movie character. I just can't stand. No. I really, I'm just so tired of that that female character stereotype where it's like the yeah. crazy, um, sexy, romantic interest. I'm just like, I have no patience for it. Like, I'm psychotic, and I'm sexy, and everybody, and the main character loves me. I'm just like, really? Then but I don't respect really. him. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I don't know. That was that was something to me that was, like, damaging to the Mandalorian and his whole story was this idea that he might have 
actually had some kind of interest in her because she was well bad, like really bad. Well, I think it kind of speaks to the place that he he was, he used to be, and now the place where he's at now. So he's definitely moved on. And by the end of the episode, you kind of see like, yeah, he over all of that. <laughs> It's a new life. Well, but then I also kind of question, like, how much of that was real? Because he doesn't really say much. True. And he's not... He doesn't ever take off his helmet, so it's hard to be, like, I know, like, how how jiggy could they have gotten? (laughs) You won't take off your armor. (laughs) With this this helmet on. Yeah. It's like, give me a kiss. It's the way it has to be, or whatever they say. Anyway, this is the way. This is the way. How do you forget this is the way? It's pretty. It's like four words. You should remember. <laughs> I'm turning into my dad. I don't know. <laughs> Uh-oh. We're going to have problems. Hey. Anyway, so I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know, though. You know what I mean? Like, I yeah. just hate that kind of, like, Harley Quinn. I hate that kind of character. Like, it just annoys me. I just. Yeah. Oh, I'm I'm crazy, but look at how sexy I am. I'm sexy because I'm, like, I'm dangerous. I don't know if there's some kind of like, weird male fantasy about dating some super crazy chick who's also really hot i don't it doesn't make sense to me but it's kind of like it must be a thing i don't i don't know as a woman it just bugs me i just don't like that stereotype that kind of cliche character at all it must be like the free-spirited person like gone bad (laughs) i guess i don't know (laughs) i don't know but other than that i really enjoy the episode (laughs) yeah well let's not get lost in those weeds um but yeah i i like the uh the setup and Getting onto this uh, New Republic prison ship transport. Yeah. And, you know, the droid who's part of their crew, who obviously the Mandal- Mandalorian doesn't like. Right. Hey, I think to me he was the most unnerving. Yeah, because... His dead robot voice. Somehow <laughs> Richard Awade played a dead voice because that guy's he's pretty funny. Yeah. But I mean, he did a good job with this one. Anyhow, but yeah, he was the most unnerving to me. I was like, ooh, these people are all scum and villainy. You know, I mean, it's just like all of that personified with this crew. But he was the worst, I thought. Yeah, well, because you just can't figure out where he's coming from. There's something very, I mean, that's, he was the most droid-like droid character. That they've had. That they've had in Star Wars, I feel like. You know, where you were really thinking, because like C-3PO and he's R2-D2, got, they, have and all they have like, yeah, they have yeah. personalities, they show emotion. This guy really seemed like, a really cold, a emotionless, yeah, droid. Well, and you kind of see that, like, there's a little, like, uh, cat and mouse thing on board the ship while right. the crew's down on the cruiser, him looking for a little uh, baby Yoda, and his first instinct is to try to shoot it. <laughs> right. And, well, and, like, the other characters, you know, they're bad, but, like, bad is somehow easier to understand than, like, bad with passions, you know what I'm saying? Bad right. with emotions. So it's like easier the, for us to understand and connect to as human beings than just, like... The cold killing machine. Yeah, like, somebody who's truly, like, a socio... Like, that, that makes him seem like a sociopath, right? Like, he has no feeling. Right. There you know, he could moral ambiguity and which all that. He doesn't have any feeling. He's a droid. You know, what I'm right? Like, he would only have feelings if he were programmed to have feelings. But mm-hmm. it made him super creepy. I agree. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I like that. I like that um, they brought back uh, Clancy Brown yeah. as the big good Davronian uh, Berg, and he was he was great. You know, he was he the cool horns and stuff, and <laughs> looked like the devil. There there were a lot of great callbacks in this episode. Um, it, I well, what's like his name? Who's the Matt, voice of Anakin? Yeah, Matt Lanter's um, like two second part. <laughs> it wasn't very much. It was a little longer than two seconds. All right, that, that was hyperbole for anyone out there keeping score. A little bit hyperbole. of that hyperbole. Yep. It was the epitome of hyperbole. <laughs> Anyhow, but I, I overall, I really enjoyed the episode. Visually, it's always you know great as always. And right. Had some cool action set pieces. Yeah, very and, cool uh, ones in this. One. Who knew these uh, cadre of dirtbags tried to, to betray the Mandalorian? And yeah, actually, you know. you know what? I wasn't expecting that. I knew. I mean, obviously, you knew they something were hatching something when yeah. they were on the ship and they're whispering to each other. But the impression you had because of what had happened right before it with Baby Yoda being revealed to them yeah. was that it was about Baby Yoda. Yeah. Right? That they were planning to do something with Baby Yoda. Yeah. I and so I kept expecting him. him to be in danger, not from the droid so much, but from them, you know, from mm-hmm. the whole band of them, like they were the planning crew, something against him. Right. But instead, they were, you know, hatched this plot against the, Mandalorian. the Mandalorian. Yeah. And so they, they kick him into the prison cell and take right. out the uh, person there there to uh, break out the crazy toilet chick's crazy brother Hmm. (laughs) comes in pairs so and again there's a little bit of backstory there that uh, they kind of 
hint at, and I like that this show does not just dive deep into backstory and just slog everything down. Right. It's like you kind of get the implications and they keep it moving. And so hopefully they fill stuff in maybe at a later date. And if not, that's fine too. Well, and I think it's interesting how the Mandalorian didn't kill the crew members. Right. That Like that stayed behind on the New Republic prison ship, right? Mm-hmm. So Clancy Brown and Bill Burr and whatever her name is, who's from uh, Harry Potter. Natalie Tenna. Right. So name. they're all, you know, they're all in prison. And that was or like Natalia. an interesting yeah. reveal at the end. Right. But then he totally had no qualms about putting the <laughs> yeah. tracker on the spaceport or whatever it was and killing all of the people that were there. Or at least, you know, ruining their afternoon. I mean, they shoot up their base, their space station, and what? probably bring in reinforcements to capture all of it, them. Didn't it blow up at the end? No. There it was, was just some, on fire? There was, some ex- there was some explosions on board, yes. But I don't, you know. So, so Whatever happens, they, they got Well, the, I mean, definitely was like had no qualms about potentially killing the people no not at all that were on there including people he didn't know you know and this guy that he used to he do, did know and do business know, with yeah. right but who betrayed him right yeah. and then this other guy that he obviously had some <laughs> history paid. with an issue in the past or whatever <laughs> yeah and so but, but it's just interesting to me that because this on the one hand it's like oh look the mandalorian didn't kill those guys right he yeah. just left them in prison mm-hmm. and so then you're like oh so you know that's good like they deserve to be in prison but you don't need to go around killing everybody but then on the other hand he's like i got no problem killing well, you well i'm not killing you but i'm going to let the new republic i'm not going to stop it either <laughs> and <laughs> kind of make that happen you right get someone else to do the dirty work so that i don't know i don't know what to even think about that really. i i thought that was pretty sweet well i mean i know i mean like from a like yeah, fanboy like perspective. Like a justice, vengeance, yeah. revenge is sweet kind of thing. You know, yeah, of course my reaction to it was kind of like, hey, hey. But, <laughs> like, that's kind of cool. But I'm just saying, like, but on the other hand, like, from a moral standpoint, yeah, it's, it's a again like this. Area. Right, it's like this gray <laughs> area that he lives in where it's like, sometimes he makes a choice where I'm like, oh, that's like a good person choice. And then sometimes he makes a choice and I'm like, that's not really a good person choice. I'm not really sure that we should do that. <laughs> you yeah. Know? I know there's a lot of a lot of cool stuff in there, like the Bill Burns or Bill Burr's line about like uh, him being part of the Imperial, uh, an Imperial sharpshooter. Yeah, and <laughs> that was so funny. And I know he's like, well, that's not impressive. Hey, I wasn't a stormtrooper. <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> that, that was good. That was a good line. <laughs> um, there was a lot of great stuff in this episode. Um, all the callbacks, like you said, but. I don't know. I, I liked the the crew and just kind of the feeling of like just uneasiness that they created. Right. And I mean, you knew something was up. You didn't really know and weren't quite sure what it was going to be. And I, I like you, I was kind of surprised by that uh, twist in the plan. Right. And I thought that was that was pretty sweet. It's like, okay, how's he going to get out of this? And well, you know, know, just they, his resourcefulness. They is really super worked awesome. um, with the space of the spaceship well. You know, the yep. layout of it. Mm-hmm. There's this thing about being in these corridors where it's like, even though the corridor is big, you feel like you're in this. I mean, you are in this really enclosed space. Very claustrophobic. You don't know what's coming around the corner. You don't know, you know, when the Mandalorians come around the corner, when the droids are coming around the corner, right? Right. Like, yeah, because not yeah. only had to watch out for the Mandalorian after he broke out of his cell, but right. the uh, the ship was uh, loaded with New Republic uh, battle droids right and then like him using like and the use of all the doors the war droids or whatever they call yeah, them yeah the, the the inner doors you know mm-hmm. inside the ship and then yeah. um and and using the the lights coming off and on and the sounds mm-hmm. of the alarms and stuff like that and then like the whole thing i mean it's a really typical thing but like when there's prison like you're in a prison you're walking down a Amongst the cell, cells, you know, and you can kind of see into the cells bits of what's behind right the each of the cell doors, you know, but not a lot. And you kind of have those like jump scare almost kind of moments where something lunges at the door, They're sticking their hand I out. I mean, or whatever. even though you've seen stuff like this before, it, they used it really effectively. Like I right. just think it, it. It's just one of those things. If well. you do it right, it's just so tried and true. It's just like how can it not work? Right. And, you know, obviously there's times when it's really telegraphed, but this it still worked, even though it's like you know it's coming. But it still works. Right. It's good stuff. Yeah. And and I thought, like, they did some unexpected things then, too. Like, with um, the fight with Clancy Brown and the Mandalorian. Yeah. Um, at the end. And, 
Yeah, in the and control room. You're fight. not, you're, you know, like he goes to get crush, you know, he goes to crush him with the doors, and then <laughs> yeah, he's holding like, one hold, of them up. You know, he yeah. pushes it back up, and then you crush, and then he slams the other door, yeah. and you think he gets like chopped or something, you know, and so then again at the end you see what actually happened to him. His horns got shaved off or whatever, yep. right? You know, and <laughs> but he's otherwise fine, right? Um, so I mean, you know, they just did some kind of things like that where I just think they used. Some kind of cliche, like things that you've seen a lot in movies. Not maybe right. not cliche, but just things you know, tropes or whatever that you've seen in movies a lot. Yeah. But then use them in a slightly different way. Well, I like that. Like all of those people who tried to do harm to him really got their comeuppance. Right. Lots of comeuppance were dealt out in this episode. Yeah, but you know, like, should we want people to get their comeuppance? Is that a is that a good instinct, hmm. or is that a part of the natural man that we should be trying? To fight against this desire for people to have their comeuppance. Well, maybe if, if we're not the one delivering the comeuppance, if it's a higher power <laughs> delivering the comeuppance, that makes it okay. And the Mandalorian is that higher he power. He is the higher power of come up and delivering, yeah. Oh, I, I see what you mean, obviously, but... But I just think it's funny, because, I mean, of from course... From a story that, standpoint, it's very satisfying. Right, yeah, I mean, it is. I mean, obviously, like, there's this part of us as human beings where we want justice sure and of course we're attached to the mandalorian that's you know that's he's our protagonist he's Mm -hmm. the person we're supposed to be rooting for and so people that screw him over we want them to get get their due you know i mean that's totally natural it's not like he's a total jerk face because like he he ended up helping out the people at the village and right no that's what i'm saying it's like you know like he's gonna throw the rookie bounty hunter a bone in the last episode but that guy right to double cross him so he's done some really good things and and you've seen him grow as a character but then you still see that he's you know he's definitely still willing to go dark when he has very much a part of that world (laughs) right he's very much a part of of his world there you know or even when he doesn't have to when he just like again well and again i think it's just like trying to figure out what what his exact moral code is you know what? Yeah. You know he does live by honor, whatever. I mean, that was part of the whole thing with him taking the guy back to the ship. You know? It's yeah. Like, right. Yeah. The the toilet. I mean, that then they, he was uh, like, "I'll take you back, but then I'll let you get killed or whatever." But I'll even get paid for taking you back. So <laughs> <laughs> win win. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I'm just saying it's like it. They're doing a really good job of just kind of layering on this idea of who he is, again, without a lot of exposition, yes. with just seeing these episodes unfold, the little hints that they give you about who he is and his interactions with other people and the choices he makes in each episode. I think it's really interesting character development. Yeah, I like that he's not one-dimensional. He's very complex. Yeah. So anyway, so it was a good episode. Cool. I know that some people were disappointed in it. You know, some people are like, oh, the first three episodes are so much better. And I just, look, I, the first two episodes were fine, but. Episode three was really good. But that's when it really took off for me. And since then, I feel like it's been good. Like, I would go back and watch episodes three, four, five, and six probably multiple times. But episodes one and two, I'm not sure that I would go back and watch them multiple times. Especially two. Two was the weakest for me so far. Hmm. I would check them out again just to see, like, if there were other, like, little bits of nuance that they right. threw in there. I'm not saying I would never watch them again. I'm just saying, like, oh, I, I, I might not go back to them over and over and over They wouldn't again. be your, your go-tos. Right. Okay. Excellent. So... Anything else on this one? <laughs> no, I'm excited to see the next two episodes and see how the se- the season you know, finishes up. out. And yeah. I'm have they announced whether or not they're planning to make more episodes? I think they have to because I think this has been doing very well. Well, I know it has been doing very well, but I'm just wondering if they've actually made that official announcement. If it was I, always part of the plan or, you know, I just, I guess I should look into that. But I hope it is, you know. <laughs> so anyway, because I just think it's been very good so far i agree i've enjoyed it i've been right. entertained so josh tell us about this picture that you drew for this review well i wanted to draw the uh group of mercenaries thugs that uh, went with him and accompanied him on this mission and so kind of a little rogues gallery and uh i thought it'd be a really cool lineup and i put them all in order of how they get who gets taken out when you know oh. first second third fourth and then him <laughs> standing at the end victorious <laughs> Boom. Winner. Winner. <laughs> As he points to himself, winner. <laughs> well, it's very nice. Good job. Thank you. I love nice drawings. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Josh. Now that we have talked about your art and we've talked about the episode, right. what should people do next? 
If you haven't done so already, hit that notification bell. Also hit the subscribe button. We yes. like new subscribers. Helps us get ever closer to monetization. <laughs> um, and also just expands our community of friends. Come yes. be our friend. We like it, friends. <laughs> <laughs> You, maybe. Anyway, <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, yeah, not Josh. He's a recluse. But I, I like I, friends. Yes, that is true. How about digital friends, Josh? <laughs> you don't have to see them in real life. You can just communicate with them in the comments. All right. <laughs> yes, leave a comment. We do like to hear from you guys and throw in the discussion what you like, dislike about the episode. Uh, also, share this on other social media platforms. Yep. All right, thanks. Thanks.